Good afternoon. Um, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I am James Regan. I am the co-founder and CEO of Oriel Networks. And I'm going to speak with you this afternoon about how we can solve the problem of scaling up AI infrastructure without burning down the planet. So I don't know if anybody recognizes this. This is Three Mile Island. It's the site of the largest uh, nuclear accident in, uh, in US history, where one of the uh, reactors partially melted down in 1979. But it was recently acquired by Microsoft to power the next generation of AI cluster. Meanwhile, we have Google has just, um, I'm told, put in an order for nine compact nuclear reactors, and Amazon is doing the same. So what is happening here? This is the kind of power that's required to build out the next generation of infrastructure in which a trillion dollars will be invested over the next few years. So this is a big problem. But it gets worse. All of those beautiful GPUs, those expensive GPUs, are actually um, idle most of the time. They're idle, but still burning power. And they're idle because they are waiting. They're waiting for the network. So imagine if we're training a large language model on an infrastructure with tens of thousands of GPUs. That model is running on all of the GPUs individually, and at the end of every cycle, the gradients are shared across all of the GPUs, across, that, across the network. And you can't go on to the next cycle until all the gradients, until all the bits of data have reached all the GPUs, which means that delay in that network is a killer. And the way that the network is built today is with electrical packet switching, plain old Ethernet, or its slightly go faster uh, friend, uh, InfiniBand, and there are various other proprietary versions. So what's happening here is that that gradient data is flying out of the GPU as light, and then it reaches an electrical packet switch, it gets converted into electricity, gets manipulated as electricity and switched around, then it gets converted into light, it gets sent on to the next switch, converted into electricity, switched around, converted into light, sent on to the next switch, and so on and so on and so on, down a long chain from GPU to GPU. And all of those switches are A, expensive, B, burning a lot of power, and C, it's slowing down the data. They're adding a lot of latency. And the way that uh, electrical packet switching is, is, is based is you send the data and eventually it works its way through like a, like a car network. And the more heavily loaded it becomes, the more heavily congested it becomes, the slower and slower and slower it becomes to get those last packets through the network. So what are we going to do? What's the answer? How can we build something which is, which is better? Well, the answer is light. So we have our data, our, um, our gradient data, flowing as light. What if we could keep it as light? What if we could switch it as light, manipulate it, and let it flow through the whole network as light? Then it would fly through the network at the speed of light with extremely low latency from GPU to GPU. It would burn no power in the network. And you can let a vast amount of data to flow that way. But how would you build a vast data center just out of light? How do you control such a data center? That's a really big problem. Now, fortunately, um, Professor George Zervas of UCL has spent the last 20 years trying to figure out how to do exactly that. And the last 10 years, homing in on a particular solution and trying to figure out how to solve all of the different problems of how to build an optical system that would do that, how to control an optical system that could do that, how to manipulate small chunks of light and route them around a whole data center. 
Meanwhile, I've spent the last 20 years taking technology from research labs, building businesses out of it, building companies, raising funding, scaling. So last year, Professor Zervas reached out to me and together with two of his postdocs, we co-founded Oriel Networks to take George's vision and go build it. So since then, we've raised pre-seed, seed and series A in just over a year. We've raised $35 million and we built a team of engineers to build this system. And we're building a product. We're also working with the largest um, contract manufacturers in the world, the guys who already build the AI infrastructure, the guys who already build the data centers of today. We've partnered with them to build this network for us because we're not using any kind of funky technology that comes from you know, funky processes that you can't get. It's all billion dollar companies building this. The technology and the product is full stack. To make something like this work, you have to work from right down in the photonics all the way up to the computer science that, that runs it. So we have innovations and patents from down in the photonics and the photonic integrated circuits. Now the photonic integrated circuits are a key enabling technology for this. Just as in the 1960s and the 1970s, the ability to put a lot of transistors onto a chip allowed us to do a lot of complex things with electronics, like build a microprocessor. In the last few years, the, the ecosystem to build integrated circuits of light has matured to the point that you can now build complex optical functionality in light and manufacture it at scale. So on top of that, we have to be able to switch those photonics in nanoseconds, which is an interesting control problem. But actually a much bigger problem is how would you make a network of tens, hundreds of thousands of nodes and have the whole network switching in nanoseconds? That's a very difficult problem. And um, George has spent the last 10 years developing a hardware-based scheduler that can do exactly that. And then sitting right at the top, we have collective operations. Collective operations are what allow you to take an AI workload and run it on a system. So given we now have a vast brain of tens, hundreds of thousands of GPUs all connected together at the speed of light with extremely low latency, very high throughput, now you can run your AI workload in a much more intelligent way and you can get a dramatic speed up of something like LLM training. At the same time, you're reducing power consumption to maybe 5 to 10 percent of the network, or 5 to 10 percent of what the network was using, but you're also saving power in the GPUs because you're using your GPUs efficiently. And with this, with this product that we are now building, you can connect a million GPUs together with no electrical packet switching in the way. So that's what we are building. What's also rather beautiful about this is it's a plug and play solution, which means that it's uh, a NIC that plugs into existing standard socket on a standard server. And because, um, uh, which means you can plug it into any kind of server that's currently out there on the planet. So we are talking with everybody from the GPU manufacturers, the CPU manufacturers, the network equipment builders, the network system integrators, people that run data centers, all the way through to hyperscalers, any one of which, or all of which, can buy our product. And this is really interesting because you now disaggregate the GPUs from the network. And one of the frustrations for a lot of the customers in this, in this ecosystem is that some of the GPU manufacturers are, are pushing their own network. They want to sell you the complete thing, and the customers don't like that. They're forced into a bundled solution. But with our technology, you can choose an amazing, super high-performing network and combine it with your choice of GPUs. They're essentially unbundled, and that puts more power into the hands of the people building the data centers, 
and also in terms of, shall we say, a wider base of GPU manufacturers to compete in this market. So we're now um, going out um, next year to raise our next round, our Series B, and we're, we are opening up conversations with interested parties that have a capacity to, to invest at scale in what is going to uh, radically change the way that we build uh, these networks. So in conclusion, yes, we can build networks and infrastructure that lets our data fly through the network and still preserve our beautiful planet. Thank you very much.